Okay, great. Well, Mitchell, last that news. Today, what I want to talk about some of the news is just a, a pretty fascinating indicator called the MVRV Z score. And the reason I want to go over that is because these indicators can give us a little bit of a peek into what could potentially could happen. Uh, but remember, not everything is 100%. But it is fascinating to take a look at a little bit of retrospective. So we're going to take a look at the MVRV score. We're going to take a look at uh, the three different uh, bottom indicators. And we'll take a look at cycle lows and highs. And then just a little bit of history about recession. So the first things first, um, I will say that as far as indicators go, it's important to pay attention. But again, they won't be 100%. There was one that uh, I totally missed, the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. I did a a video on June 6, 2021, and I said, watch this Bitcoin indicator to exit 2021. Well, unfortunately, uh, I missed it by a couple of months. And that's just how, how narrow our window of opportunity is. And the Pi Cycle Top indicator, it did hit off around uh, 63, 64,000 in April. Uh, it did miss that, that second double top, but the first one would have been just fine because it's very hard to time the absolute tippy top of a market or the absolute bottom sector. As long as we can get around 80%, hey, I feel that's a pretty good day. So uh, again, when, we, when you're thinking about this in the future, about what to take a look at, just remember that the most sanest times are the chances to actually look back and say, you know what, I had a plan back then, that's when things weren't so hectic, I'm gonna stick with that plan. And that's what I'm gonna try to do today. So what I wanna take a look at is the MVRV Z score. And you can find, uh, these charts and Pi Cycle Top and all the really good ones at uh, lickonabitcoin.com. There's a, there's a link below. Uh, they're 100% free. They're high quality uh, indicators, and I use them almost all, every single day. So to talk about this, what is an MVRV score? Well, it uses three metrics. The market value, which is the blue line, which is the current price of Bitcoin, multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. Very simple. I think we can see it's right there, this blue line as it goes up. Now we take a look at the realized value is the orange line. The price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved adds up uh, all those individual prices and taking the average, multiplies that average price by the total number of coins in circulation. And during so, it strips out the short-term market sentiment. So uh, the orange line, this little gold-looking thing right here, that's what we're talking about. And then lastly, and the most important one is the Z-score or the red line. This pulls out the extremes in the data between market value and realized value. And this is what we're gonna focus on primarily, this, this nice big jagged red line. And what I want you to notice is that, what I love about these charts is that it makes it very simple, okay? So when you're in the red, that's a good opportunity to really think hard about selling. Not like I'm telling you what to do, this is not financial advice, not a financial advisor, I'm just telling you what I do and what I look at. So when it gets in this red zone, not a bad time to think about buying, right? And then of course, down here when it gets in this green zone, when things are, especially the prices are going uh, quite low, maybe that's a good idea to think about picking some up. But there, is some, there are some concerns and, and actually uh, MVRV Z score and the MVRV score, they all pretty much said the same thing. We had done a video uh, about these bottom and top indicators. You can find those at danteacherscrypto.com, probably above this one. Uh, and they're all quoted are all pointed to around June 13th or so, 2022 was when we started into this heavy accumulation phase. But there is a, some concern. So it makes it very simple, right? Accumulate, accumulate, sell up here, you know, buy low, sell high, very simple stuff. I will notice of one thing, and because, you know, on this channel, uh, I believe in the, in the four year cycles, like we've talked about before, uh, there's always a having, of course, having, the uh, production of uh, Bitcoin gets cut in half. And that the first one happened in 2012, you go to an all-time high, and then a little bit of a dip and a reset, 14 and 15. Same thing happened in 2016. You had a halving, all-time high, dip, a reset. Same thing happened in 2020. There was a halving, we hit an all-time high in 2021, and we're going through quite a bit of turbulence right now. It is uh, end of August, 2022, and Bitcoin price is hovering around $22,000. And uh, it might go even lower. So what does this mean? This means that there were some pretty big lows. And if we take a look at this chart, we can very see it quite simply. In those four year cycles, there's really three points I'm, I wanna look at. I wanna look at the three points for around after the all time high in 2014, 15, after the all time high in 2018, 19, and after the all time high, well, we can't do it here. But if we can see here, this first accumulation phase, when we're taking a look at uh, the first 
four-year cycle, 2012, 13, 14, and 15. Remember, we had an all-time high in 2013. If we take a look here, we can see that here's our all-time high coming up to this point. And coming down here, see this area right in this part? Let me blow that up so you can see it. You see how it goes in the green, which means probably a good idea to accumulate. But there's this point where it just totally bottoms out. I mean, massively. It goes even below what we consider the accumulation part. And it has gone there for a couple of times. So that was our local bottom January 14th, somewhere around there, 2015 or so. And if we take a look at the next piece, 2018 and 19, it happened around here. Let me blow that up as well. And you can see it went down pretty, pretty fast. And there was a point where it went down massively low. And it goes even below the accumulation phase, the accumulation point, around December of 2018 or so. And what concerns me is that if we move forward into 2021, when we were talking about around June 13th, where we thought that was the it, that was the bottom, you'll notice one thing, let me blow this up. It doesn't go below that. It hasn't gone below that yet. And what that means is I, when I take a look at the cycle lows and, and, and tops, if I take a look, the percentage between the top of 2013, remember that first cycle, $1,127, and the absolute bottom was 172, which is about 85%. In the next cycle, between 2016 and 2020, we had a, we had a high of almost 20,000 and a low of 3,200, which is a, about 84% reduction. And now in 2021, we had a high of 67,145, but only a low of around 19,047. Some may say it's actually 17,400, depending on which data that you look at. That's only around 71, 75%, which is not so well. So again, we take a look at here, it hasn't really bottomed, bottomed, bottomed. If we take a look over here and say to ourselves, well, what would it look like if it was 85% or 84% from the all-time high of 67,000? What that means is that you have a Bitcoin low of around $10,000 for this cycle. Does that mean that it will absolutely definitely happen just because it happened in the past? No, but it's conceivable, especially with all the macro events that are going on. We're seeing a lot of different issues, of, of course, with the housing market. We see that there is less of a demand. There is more of a supply. We see the inflation rate is actually, it has decreased a little bit, but only for, for uh, one CPI number, as Jerome Powell from the Fed has raised the rates. We're taking a look at the UK. They're looking at 13, 14, 18%. Energy crisis along uh, the entire uh, European nations. They're going up 5, 6, 7x. And there's a lot of macro events that we can point to that do not look too promising. And then one more thing I would like to make uh, note of, and that is that if we take a look at the dates of, of U.S. recessions, it's always about two years, give or take, a year and a half, year and three quarters, two years, somewhere around there. You had one in 1969 to 1970, 71, 1973, about a year and a half, year and a half, two years, about a year, and then over course here, about two years in the big recession. But if you notice that when Bitcoin was created in 2009, it was all economic upside. And that lasted for 10 full years. And then of course we had a little bit of a, of a dip or a recession here in 2020 for that nice thing called coronavirus. But all I want you to notice is this, is that if the, we do go into recession, it doesn't last forever. It's a natural cycle. And if we go into recession now, Let's say we go into it in 2023. Well, what does that mean? Well, if it's a four-year cycle, I will tell you this. If we go into recession around 2023, we got that full year, and then 2024 for the Bitcoin halving, and what happens over here? An all-time high. So does that mean that it'll definitely happen? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if we take a look back a little bit of history to see what has been, we can see what potentially could be. Not that it's 100% guaranteed, but it does make me nervous a little bit about accumulation. And the last thing I will say, as far as MVRVs, you can actually use these kind of like a risk factor. For me, if I take a look at this, as, as we're in this accumulation phase, it could go even farther from 19 or from 22,000 down to 10,000. That is very true. So I'm not uh, putting everything that I have in there right now, but as these numbers start to rise, Maybe instead of accumulating so much, 
maybe you wait till it kind of cools off and go there. Again, you can use it any way you want to. They call it dynamic DCAing. Instead of uh, instead of putting you know 100 every day into Bitcoin, maybe you wait till it goes down a little bit and just take a look at these Z scores and go, wow, it went from a, a four down to a two. Maybe instead of $20 of Bitcoin, I buy $30 today or however you want to do it. And that is it for today's video. So look, I know uh, there's a little bit, uh, some might say that's a little bit uh, on the uh, wary side, but uh, it's all about managing risk. And I just want to give you all the options that are out there. So like today's video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. That would uh, go a long way. Also consider subscribing. Lots of me talk about our time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.